we've now come to the end of period two on the periodic table. And we've just filled up the second shell. The next element, sodium, is in period three. So we'll need to add another shell to our model. Now we're showing three shells. Sodium has 11 protons, and its most common form has 23 minus 11, which is equal to 12 neutrons in its nucleus. A neutral sodium atom has 11 electrons. The first shell holds two electrons, so we'll add the first two electrons to the first shell. The second shell holds a maximum of eight electrons, so we can add eight electrons to the second shell, like this. So now we have two electrons in the first shell and eight electrons in the second shell. So we've added a total of 10 electrons. Sodium has 11, so we still have one more to add. Since shells one and two are filled, sodium's 11th electron must go into shell number three. So this is our Bohr model for sodium. At this point, you may want to pause the video and try to draw Bohr models for the rest of the elements in period three on your own. Then you can resume the video and check your answers. You can see that magnesium has 12 protons and its most common form has 24 minus 12, which is equal to 12 neutrons in its nucleus. Magnesium has 12 electrons in a neutral atom, so they can be arranged like this. And this is one possible Bohr model for magnesium. It shows two electrons in shell number three as a lone pair. Another possible model for magnesium shows the two electrons in shell number three as being unpaired and at right angles to each other like this. Still another possible model shows these two electrons opposite each other in the atom like this. Aluminum has 13 protons and 27 minus 13, which is equal to 14 neutrons in its nucleus, and 13 electrons in a neutral atom. The 13 electrons can be arranged like this. This is one possible Bohr model for aluminum. This model has one lone pair and one unpaired electron in shell number three. Another possible Bohr model for aluminum shows three unpaired electrons in the third shell, like this. Silicon has 14 protons and 28 minus 14, which equals 14 neutrons in its nucleus. And a neutral silicon atom has 14 electrons, which can be arranged like this. So this is one possible Bohr model for silicon. This one has one lone pair and two unpaired electrons in shell number three. Another possible Bohr model for silicon shows four unpaired electrons in the third shell. This model is commonly used for silicon atoms in molecules. Phosphorus has 15 protons and 31 minus 15, which equals 16 neutrons in its nucleus. A neutral phosphorus atom has 15 electrons which can be arranged like this. So this is the Bohr model for phosphorus. Notice it has one lone pair and three unpaired electrons in shell number three. This is the most useful Bohr model for phosphorus, so it's the one that's usually used. The element sulfur has 16 protons and 32 minus 16, which equals 16 neutrons in its nucleus. Sulfur has 16 electrons in a neutral atom, which can be arranged like this. So here's the Bohr model for sulfur. It has two lone pairs at right angles to each other and two unpaired electrons at right angles to each other, as shown here. This model is commonly used for sulfur. The next element, chlorine, has 17 protons. The atomic mass of chlorine is 35.5. About 76% of chlorine atoms in nature have an atomic mass of 35, while about 24% have an atomic mass of 37. So we'll use the most common isotope of chlorine, chlorine 35, to calculate the number of neutrons. 35 minus 17 equals 18. A neutral chlorine atom has 17 electrons, which can be arranged like this. So this is the Bohr model for chlorine. Shell number three has three lone pairs and one unpaired electron. The next element is argon with 18 protons and 40 minus 18, which equals 22 neutrons in its nucleus. And a neutral argon atom has 18 electrons, 
which are arranged like this. So this is our Bohr model for argon. Notice argon has a stable octet in its highest occupied shell, shell number three. The third shell holds a maximum of eight electrons, and an argon atom has eight electrons in its third shell. So its highest or third shell is completely filled. Therefore, argon is a noble gas. This brings us to the end of period three and a filled third shell. The next element, potassium, is the first element in period 4. Since we're starting a new period, we need to add another shell to our model, so now we have 4 shells. Potassium has 19 protons and 40 minus 19 equals 21 neutrons in its nucleus. And a neutral potassium atom has 19 electrons, which could be arranged like this. So this is our Bohr model for potassium. Its first three shells are completely filled and it has one unpaired electron in its fourth shell. Element number 20, calcium, has 20 protons and 40 minus 20, which equals 20 neutrons in its nucleus. A neutral calcium atom has 20 electrons, which could be arranged like this. So this is one possible Bohr model for calcium. The two electrons in shell number four form a lone pair. In another possible Bohr model for calcium, the two electrons in shell number four are unpaired and are at right angles to each other like this. In yet another possible model, these two electrons are across from each other in the atom. All three of these models can be considered correct.